New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Ebro in the Morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, and let's give it up one time for Emily Serrano on the program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Round of applause. She's super nervous. She doesn't do media. Uh, but you are uh, the person or one of the two people that the, uh, what was his name, Laura Stavs? Schlossberg. Ooh, Schlossberg. Yeah. Aaron, Aaron, Schlossberg, Aaron Schlossberg, the the D bag who was screaming and yelling <laughs> at you for speaking Spanish to someone that you see every day when you order lunch. Right. Step closer to the mic for me. Um. So, is that as simple as it was? You were just having a normal. Well, I was ordering my lunch. You were literally ordering food. Can yeah. you take us? Just take us through it. Just take us through how it started. Okay. Take take us through. Sure. So basically, I was ordering lunch. We were laughing. We go there three, four times a week. So we wow. know the service people there. You and coworkers? And my best friend. Okay. We don't work together, but we're close by, so we get together. Meet for, for lunch. lunch. Got yeah. it. Girl, I'm going outside. That's Meet me right. Me. You know, I can't see is, you over okay. the weekend. We got the kids. Let's right, get right, together right. for lunch. Right. Okay. So that's what we do. So we're ordering our food, and we're laughing with the service guy. And all of a sudden, we hear this guy screaming and yelling, give me my effing sandwich. Give me my sandwich. You're in America and I have to listen to you speak Spanish. You speak English here. I feel disrespected. So just that fast, we're into the video that we all not saw. Yet. Oh, oh, so this not yet. Has, that hasn't even I didn't catch everything. I wish I did. Wow. So he's going off at the service guy, so we all kind of just stop and look like what the hell's going on? I mean, you're in New York, you know, your first thing is, do I duck? Do I hide? Yep. What do I do? Yeah, what's happening? He's screaming here? and yelling. And then we hear him saying all these things. I'm going to call ICE. At that moment, I said, wow, you're so ignorant. And he turns and he looks at me and he goes, I'm more educated than you any day. Possibly. Book smart you may be. But it doesn't negate the fact that you're ignorant. Mm. And you're being rude and nasty for no reason. Mm. Mm. And he continues to go on. You should speak Span um, You speak English. Go back to your country. Mm. So I laughed. I said, uh, I'm Puerto Rican. Born and raised in the Bronx. Wow. I'm in my country. Yeah. And if you get a book, since you're to so tech savvy, you'll learn that this country didn't belong to you. And you Facts. don't look like a native Indian to me. Facts. And he kept, I look 10 times better than you. Okay. You're a man. I'm a female. I didn't know looks were, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, in the equation. You should lose some weight. You're so curvy. Ooh, my husband loves my curves. Wow. <laughs> and he goes, well, that's his problem. He should speak Spanish. He shouldn't speak Spanish, he should speak English. And then he goes, I'm videotaping this because I'm going to call ICE. I said, okay, well, then I'm going to videotape you too. So oh, wow. All of that happened before the video. Well, yeah. the, hold on, the illest wow. part to me is that are you saying that you might not have thought to film it had he not said, I'm about to film? Well, it was in the heat of the moment. Right. You know, in the moment, you're not thinking... Oh, I'm going to videotape this Right, school. that's not the first thing that no, comes to right. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, I'm defending yeah. myself. I'm defending these hardworking men that work hard. They're so nice. They're always happy. There's times they're serving three, four people at the same exact time. Right, and they weren't doing anything except chatting with customers. Exactly. Which is what you're kind of supposed to which, do. Which, they weren't even chatting with him. He ordered his sandwich in English. They responded to him in English. And he got his food in English. So he was just upset because the gentleman in front of him spoke Spanish. And then he heard us speak Spanish. So, so he felt just, left out. His little feelings was hurt. His little privileged white male feelings was hurt. And he never he's not accustomed to feeling like the outsider or someone who doesn't fit in. So he started to lash out like a Although toddler. he's done this before. So apparently he apparently he has felt this before. Got I it. mean, yeah, you saw the BuzzFeed article that they did great work. They started pulling up every single oh, yeah, time this is what he that does. he was a racist piece of crap. So then you pull out the camera and start filming. Yes. And at the same time that I do that, there's another gentleman that steps in and tells the manager, because at that point the manager walks over because it was just getting really loud. Right. And he said, is everything okay? No, it's not okay. And that's where you guys can see that the gentleman goes, he's being overly aggressive for no reason. And then the gentleman walks away. It, it was almost like he stood there to make sure that the guy didn't do anything to us and we were two females. Mm. So he kind of stood there and when the manager came over, he stepped aside. And you hear him make the statement and walk away. And he says he shouldn't be in here. But the manager kept it together, continued to talk to him. And he kept on saying, I'm calling ICE. I'm going to get these people deported. You know, they if they have the nerve to come here and take my money to get welfare. They're just working. started saying crazy yeah. things. Right, yeah, right. it didn't yeah. make sense. Full blown. Point, like, okay. So full blown crazy talk. So now I'll ask you, uh, your lawyer, what's your name? Dante Mills. Dante. So thank you for being here. What, um... 
What's the case? What are you trying to pursue at this point? So what we're doing at this point is we moved forward with a criminal complaint. Um, this incident happened. I think Ebro hit the nail on the head when you talk about how privileged this guy must have felt that he believed he was so much more important than Emily and the people in that room. Them speaking Spanish made him uncomfortable, so they had to change who they were to make him comfortable. Um, thankfully, part of it was caught on tape. Uh, Emily caught part of it on tape. Uh, the public response has been amazing. Uh, we were talking before, and you said, I don't know how there's another side to this. Uh, most people are uh, responding in a great way, saying that this is not acceptable. This is a different America where we're not, no longer can you say I'm more important than you because of the color of your skin. We're past that. Mm -hmm. There was a many time where that us. was the case. <laughs> many, many, of many of us, us are. Many. But the people who aren't past that, the people who believe that they're better than someone because of their race, they're the ones who they're feeling like, like, like outsiders in their own home because the world is changing. And everybody else is adapting. So if you're stuck in that mentality of saying white is right or, or you have to adapt to me because I'm more important than you, you're getting left behind. And that's why you see people lashing out all over the country because they're looking around and the thought process that they have is old news. Uh, we've moved on. So we move forward with a criminal complaint because we want to make sure that this isn't something that happens. He gets media backlash. We appreciate the support, but in a while, the media attention is going to turn. Something else is going to happen. So what do you hope to get? we don't want it to move on. So what's the hope? Criminal there? charges. You are criminal uh, charges. Absolutely. Well. And we filed a criminal complaint. Uh, we went down to the police station, filed a criminal complaint. We're moving forward, and we're prepared to move forward with criminal charges. So this is permanently on his record. And we're setting an example of you can't put people in fear. You can't threaten people uh, because you believe they're making you uncomfortable. That's, there has to be a response to that. So this is not a financial play. This is a legal play. Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's this really, isn't a financial play that, That's really important, I think, too, because to your point, as big a story as it was, if in the end nothing happens to his record, maybe he changes the way he looks a little bit, people forget he moves to somewhere else, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. you could almost do these now, things to people and get away with he, it. When, absolutely. I, 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 we hear these things happen, right? We see them on the subway. We hear of a woman getting her hijab snatched off her head or the type of threats that you've heard or worse, which go usually get filed in a hate crime, like if there's an actual physical altercation. Or it doesn't have to be physical uh, physical contact in order for it to be So, and that's what I was going to ask you. Precedent is set for this type of case? Yes. Or is this a new precedent? No, it's not a new precedent. Um, it's something that's used a lot in the LGBT community. Um, a hate crime can be established through harassment without physical contact. Okay. And I, what I'm saying is what we need to do is shift the, the topic right now and make these people responsible when they put people in fear, mm. uh, when they feel like they can lash out and berate someone for, for their race, for the color of their skin. Listen, the police officers, the system itself is designed to protect us all. But a lot of us feel like it doesn't. What this does is turns the tides and says, uh, because when, when a white person is interacting with a minority, it's almost the feeling of if I call the cops, it's going to be us versus them. They're automatically going to be on my side. That is the, t that so is the tone most moving of the time. Some, moving forward with a criminal charge for people who behave like this, it evens the playing field. And it says you can't berate somebody because you believe if the cops show up, there's nothing that's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. I, also right? saw, I also saw, and correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't there a politician who maybe sued him because he's a lawyer for some kind of violation of, of a code of ethics? So there, there were two politicians, uh, two local uh, assembly uh, members who moved forward with the Bar Association and filed a complaint with him there. Will he get disbarred for this? Probably not. And, and, and we don't believe he should. We're not looking to completely destroy his life, but we are saying that there has to be some kind of consequence so that people don't believe they can take advantage of minorities uh, and they can lash out on people, put people in fear without any responsibility. Now, so, now Emily, for you, how much... Um, this video goes up, it goes viral, okay? Um, you posted it, obviously, because you wanted to see... Oh, you didn't post it. Who posted no. it? My best friend that was with me, her husband posted it. Because after everything kind of calmed down, because there's other parts that are not in the video towards the end of it. I actually call the police. Mm. But he runs away when I say, I'm going to call the police. At that point, I obviously told the operator, don't worry, cancel it. He's left. The threat has gone. He was so upset 
my best friend's husband was so upset because he felt I'm not there. My husband wasn't there to defend us. We're mm. two females. We're together. We're, you know, we're doing our normal. And this man is coming at us. He says, this is not okay. I'm putting this on social media. And we're going to see how far we can take this because someone has to see what he's done. And it's the original okay. the original post was from uh, our best friend's husband who said, I can't believe that our women was treated this way. Mm -hmm. So it was more, it wasn't for the attention or, or anything like that. It was more just disbelief that this is still the society we live in where people mm -hmm. threaten you, uh, act out, and feel like there's there's nothing that's going to happen to them. Oh well, yeah, for someone in New York in particular, for I think for a lot, we know that there's an underbelly of racism here that's not talked about. But I think for a lot of New Yorkers, it's so hard to imagine that happening publicly and it just being like accepted in some way and people not doing something about it. Well, and you know, if we're being honest as people who live in New York, right, we see it happen to cabbies, mm -hmm. right? And we don't really think anything of it because cabbies have a reputation and da 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 da. So a lot of people don't think anything of it. You see it happen to delivery food workers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Um, you see it happen to obviously Muslim women, right, who are wearing on the train. We've seen that happen a number of times. We see it happen to Jewish families, whether it's in their neighborhoods, on the train, Jewish men, and so it. It definitely occurs sometimes minority on minority, right? Because right? yeah. this is another precedent that's being set too. Just because. This was a white dude, right? A white Jewish dude who was felt privileged. This is a greater conversation of how everyone treats each other also. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? Because yeah. there's going to start being ramifications yeah. for this because now, you know, precedent's been set. And that's why it has to be ramifications. But the people you just mentioned are easily identified. Right. And people look down on them. But here's the one thing that we have to stop doing. We have to stop putting ourselves in a position where we change who we are to make that's someone right. comfortable. That's right. So... Listen, we've all experienced where our parents say, listen, when we get around these people, mm -hmm. you better act this Dress way. Dress this way. Speak Ab this way. Absolutely. Yes. So what we're Cold doing switch. is we're changing who we are to fit somebody else's mold of, of who what they're comfortable with. And that's not allowing them to see the true us. So then when we are ourselves in front of people, it's like, whoa, why are they acting like that? So we can help that process, too, by not changing who we are, by not uh, adapting to someone else to make them more comfortable by, by agreeing and understanding that we're just as important as they are. Emily Serrano, what's your name again, sir? Dante Mills. Dante Mills, it was a pleasure talking to you. So what, what happens next? What are the next steps? You guys have filed this complaint and then... We filed a criminal complaint. Uh, we'll be in contact uh, with the district attorney's office this week. Uh, our plan and, and the question came up when we filed the complaint, uh, is Emily prepared to move forward and follow through on the charges? The answer is yes. So once we have the conversation with the district attorney, we're going to move forward, and the plan is to move forward with these criminal charges. And Laura, the guy, uh, Schloss? Schlossberg. A Andrew Schlossberg. Aaron, Aaron. Schlossberg. Aaron. Andrew, Andrew, Aaron, whatever his name is. Aaron. Um, he lost his... No, office. He his, just, I guess his office, the, the, where his office was, they just they let him go. Of his, they broke his lease. He was in a go, collective right? office space where okay. it was oh, a like bunch a of people. Or something. Yeah, like a WeWork or something. Yeah, a bunch of people okay. working in the same office right. space. They came together and determined that it wasn't good for them, uh, so they removed him and kicked him out of that collective. I saw, and I saw his forced apology also on social media, which was beyond. He wasn't sorry. He's what? not sorry. <laughs> I didn't even see it. What did he say? <laughs> Basically, about this This is not a reflection of who I am. This is the reason I what? moved to New York City. Immigrants. I love I love immigrants. immigrants. Yes. What? And what they bring. I love diversity. Shut the hell oh, I never heard ridiculous. lies like this But you saw on his website, he had, <laughs> that, he had speak, yeah, people that speak Spanish there. But So you can you can take advantage of them for business, but outside of that... Treat them know, like garbage. Treat them like garbage. Wow. Wow. Good Thanks luck, guys. Lot, you guys. Thank, Thank you so much for coming up. I hope this gets handled. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. Yeah, no problem.